Okay, so welcome back. This is part four in our series where we're showing you how to use a wonderful free piece of software that's used in the real professional world, and it's called LabVIEW. And LabVIEW is used in many, many industries around the world for data acquisition and control, controlling devices in manufacturing, in aerospace, all over the world. And previously we talked about what is LabVIEW, we showed you how to download and install it and some of the basics of how to work with it. In this video, we're going to show you how to connect up to a very inexpensive data acquisition device called an Arduino. It's only about $20. And what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to develop what's called a virtual instrument, a VI in LabVIEW, which is what you see here. And we've got a front panel control with a scrolling chart that's showing data coming in from the Arduino in real time. And I've got about two volts connected to the A0 input of my Arduino. And this is the code behind that front panel display of the scrolling chart. And uh, we're going to show you how to develop this block diagram, it's called, in LabVIEW, so that you can access your Arduino. Now, the first thing I like to do is make sure that I've got the Arduino plugged in. In this case, I've got it a USB into the USB COM port. You can see the lights are on, everything's ready to go. Now, the next thing is once this is connected, I want to find out what COM port it's using to access the computer. So the way you can do that is go down and search for Device Manager. And under Device Manager, you can see there is a section called Ports, COM and LPT, or Line Printer. And you open that up, and you can see I've got two devices connected to COM ports. One is the USB serial port. The other is the one I want to connect with, which is an Arduino Uno on COM6. So now we know that it recognizes the Arduino on COM6, and we can go ahead and set up a virtual instrument project in LabVIEW to talk to it. So let's start up LabVIEW and set up a blank project. So here's our LabVIEW Community Edition. We can create a project, or we can just go to File, New VI, or Virtual Instrument. So here we've got our front panel, and we've got our block diagram. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to tell LabVIEW, hey, I've got a serial COM port device that I want to talk to. So what I can do is I can right click and you can see there's a whole bunch of stuff, but we can go down to the hobbyist section. And thankfully, LabVIEW has got this all configured so that we can open up, for example, a Arduino and talk to it. So we go to the hobbyist section and go to Open VI click on that and left click in our block diagram and now we have our serial port connection and we can hit the control button and scroll with the mouse wheel to zoom in which is really important because these things are awfully small otherwise and if we hover over this we can see we've got some inputs and some outputs and on the input we've got serial port we've got baud rate override and we've got error in and on the output, we've got links resource, we've got device name, and error out. Now, as you can imagine, we're going to want to tell LabVIEW, hey, I've got a device connected to COM6. So that's where this serial port connection comes in. And I can also specify the baud rate. Now, what you can do to see what this serial port has inside of it, actually, this is what's called a sub-VI. And you can double click on this and up comes a front panel just for this component. And you can see I can select the serial port, baud rate override, I've got some error in and out information, a links resource. And what I can do is I can say, hey, I want to set the serial port to COM4, in our case COM6. And you can kind of hard code it. You can set the baud rate override. And at this point, we are set up for COM6. Now, there's another option. You can make this externally accessible in your block diagram by going to Serial Port, right-clicking, Create a Constant. And immediately, it recognizes we have it set for COM6. Now, another thing you can do to get more information is you can hit Control-H. And here, you've got the context help coming up. And what I can do is I can click on that 
and it gives us an overview of what we already looked at, serial port, baud rate override, error in, error out. Now, keep in mind that this error in and error out are going to turn out to be very important because these will help you so that when you rerun your LabVIEW project, you don't have to reset your Arduino. It will automatically recognize that you've, you've restarted and it won't give you an error. Otherwise, you'll get an error if you don't hook these up correctly. So these error in and out, error out are important. We'll take a look. Now, another thing you do is click on Detailed Help. And when you click on it, you will come to the LabVIEW Maker Hub. And it's got this open serial and it's got more information about that. Now, as you can see up top, and we mentioned previously in the series, this site was deprecated on August 1st, 2020. Here we are in 2024. So four years ago, they have deprecated this site. And again, as we mentioned before, that gives you kind of an indication of how you have to be very careful with LabVIEW. They seem to be deprecating and dropping support for a lot of stuff. So don't be surprised if you see this often. So just keep in mind, you know, when you get into LabVIEW, you might see a lot of dropped support and deprecated features. But anyway, this can give you some more information. Uh, error in describes error conditions that occur before the node runs, provides standard error and functionality and so on. So just know that that's there. So now that we've made the connection to our Arduino, what do we want to do? Well, we want to, on a regular basis, read data from our A0 pins on the Arduino. And ultimately, we're going to want to chart them like on an oscilloscope. But every, you know, tenth of a second or every second, we're going to want to grab data and do something with it. We can chart it, we can put it on, we can save it to a file or so on. So to do that, what we have to do is we have to do like you would in any programming language, do a while loop which is similar to if you write an Arduino sketch, you have a setup and you have a loop. So what we're going to have to do is do a while loop to continually grab data. So to do that, you right click and go structure. And over here, there is a while loop. So you left click on that and then you drag it out. And that is our while loop. And you can see we had pressed control H, so it's got a little bit of context help up there. And you can see here, this basically does a continual while loop. And down here, we've got a stop button. So this allows us to have a button that will stop the while loop. Now, the other thing we're going to need is we have opened our serial port. But when we end, we also have to close the serial port to make it ready for the next time we run it. So we don't get any errors. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and go back down to hobbyist and over to close.vi and left click and put that right there. So now we've got the structure of a while loop. We've got the open and the close. Now what we have to do is we have to somehow figure out how to read data from this open Arduino. So we can right click, go down to hobbyist, go over to peripherals. And we want to do analog read, so we go to analog, read, click on that, and then drop it in the middle. And this is going to be doing the reading from our serial port. So now what we can do is we can take this links resource and connect it through to this terminal on the analog read, and that brings our links resource through. And we want to do the same thing to the out. So now we have a connection from the open to the read to the out, we want to do the same for the error. So we're going to go down to the error out, click on the error out. Here we we'll do the error out to here, and you can see it makes a connection with our while loop. So now all we have to do is we have to set the timing of this while loop. So every tenth of a second or every second, it will do this analog read. So what we can do is we can right click and then go up to, in programming, we go to timing, and we can go to the wait milliseconds, left click, and that will allow us to wait in this while loop for the set amount of milliseconds. So what it's going to need is a number, how many milliseconds to wait. So if I hover over this, you can see the wire spool comes up, 
and it says milliseconds to wait, I can right click and go to create constant and we can set that constant to say 100 milliseconds or one tenth of a second. So now the only other thing we need to do is we need to tell this analog read, okay, we're connected to the Arduino, what channel are we going to read? And we've set it up for analog zero. So on this, if we hover over this, we see analog channel. So we need to add a constant, which is zero, which says analog zero, we want to read from. So we're going to right click, create constant, and that now tells us we want to read from analog zero. So another thing we want to do is think about our front panel. Now the front panel is going to have a stop button on it to stop the reading, but it's also going to have a oscilloscope trace, right? Because we want to chart in real time the data. So the first thing we want to do is right click, go to Boolean, go to stop button, and now we have a stop button. And what we can do is we can make it larger. And as we said before, we can select this and go up here to make the font size, go to size 24, and that will give us a bigger size. And the only other thing we want to do is we want to add a scope, a waveform chart. So we can go to graph, waveform chart, and left click, and there is our waveform chart. So we can expand that. And now we just have to go into our block diagram and connect up the waveform chart. So you can see the waveform chart is added automatically, but we want it inside of this while loop so that it will automatically update. So what I can do is I can take this input and drag it to the voltage output of this analog read, and we should be all set to go. Um, we also need to wire up this stop button. So I'm going to drag this in and connect this up to the stop button. And one more thing we can do to, to set up this chart a little bit better is we can right click, go to properties, and go to the plots and we can choose a thicker line to plot. So we can choose something like this, hit OK. Now you can see we've got a thick line. And what I can do is I can press Run, and you can see it is automatically updating. And a nice thing, it's automatically scrolling the chart. So what I can do is I can go over to my um, power supply, turn it on, and see the change in the plot in real time. So now we can see that we're all set. We're talking to our Arduino. And then what we can do is we can think about, you know, maybe I want to save this data to a file. Maybe I want to change the scaling. Uh, there's a lot of things, but at least we now have this all set up so that we can read data from our Arduino. So that's it for this one. Uh, in the upcoming videos, we're going to talk about how to connect with other uh, professional data acquisition devices like a LabJack. And then we're going to get into more depth on LabVIEW and how to use it. So if you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.